breaking news from ABC 13. And good morning to all of you. I'm Tom Cook along with Elisa Rivas as we join you now for our continuing coverage of this rain and the storms that have kind of plagued a lot of people this morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Elia Loresca for the latest. All right, we have several hours, guys, where we are going to see a pretty good chance of seeing some scattered rain showers and scattered thunderstorms. Those chances for rain for the next several hours between 60 to 70 percent. Now earlier this morning we saw very limited, vis limited visibility from our tower camera, uh, although now we're starting to see a little bit of improvements. Showers and storms now are beginning to fire up down closer to the coastline and temperatures are rain cooled with the heavy rains and storms that move through around Bush Airport. Now starting to see the leading edge of this moving toward Galveston. Now there's still a flood advisory, one flood advisory left, uh, including much of Harris County, impacting over 2.3 million people. Bel Air, Houston, Humble, West University uh, included in that. Uh, but you can see a lot of the heavy rain that has fallen over uh, since midnight has been falling on the northwest side of town and is still raining there. That's where we're seeing radar estimates up close to four inches of rain around the city of Magnolia, almost an inch and a half, inch and a half in Katy, almost two inches here in the city of Houston and Cleveland, a little over an inch and a half there. So we're going to continue to add to those rainfall totals as we're still dealing with some light to moderate rain showers that continue to build behind that boundary. Now that boundary is moving. That is the good news ahead of this boundary. You can already see some development, some showers and storms firing up because the conditions are favorable to see some of these showers and storms now favoring uh, some of our coastal communities. On the west side of town, this line of heavy rain is now making its way across central portions of Wharton County, continuing to press across Fort Bend County. And within the next 15 to 20 minutes, we'll see the leading edge of that boundary moving into Brazoria and Matagorda County. But now we're starting to see some of these showers and storms being fueled by the very warm air mass and humid air mass ahead of that line. So notice the thunder and lightning now impacting some of our coastal communities and also down uh, closer toward the waters there. Latest on future track is indicating most of these showers and storms actually get shoved into the Gulf waters as we get around lunchtime. So for the next couple of hours, it could be a little bit choppy out there. So you definitely want to be aware of that if you are planning on heading out and driving around. Speaking of your drive this morning, let's take a look at traffic with Catherine. And Lita, right now we are looking at delays across town thanks to high water spots, but also, of course, that blinding rain across the area. So if you're coming into town right now, just remember to take it easy, take it slow. A couple of those high water spots listed for you right here. 20th at Mangum, I-45 at Little York, I-45 at North Shepherd at the park and ride there. Those being reported by Metro. I've got a full list of that at Catherine ABC 13 on my Twitter, so be sure to follow along there as well. But a big reminder for those of you who are driving around town, just make sure that if you do encounter or any high water spots, any of that ponding and puddling that you're not driving into those locations it can be hard to tell just what's below that and how deep that water is. If you're coming in over um, for Metro. I tweeted this out as well with a link to all the different locations dealing with route delays and also high water. Want to take you outside right now. East Texas Freeway at the North Loop. We've got a northbound accident that just happened here. This actually involves a big rig, so traffic currently able to get by near 59 and 610, but as as you can see, this is a big trouble spot for those of you who are trying to get through. It'll likely be a little while before this does clear out of the way. Conditions are slick, so it makes it hard to react quickly whenever you see uh, conditions like this, those wet roads making it hard to stop abruptly. North Sam Houston Tollway at Ella, very heavy traffic here in the area. So if you're traveling in in this spot, just watch for those extra delays there too. And a reminder, we have seen flight delays, especially inbound traffic at IAH and at Hobby. So make sure you're checking on your flight before you head out the door today. Catherine, thank you. Lightning, which is, of course, included in all those storms from overnight, believed to have sparked a house fire in spring. Our reporter Jeff Ealing has been on the scene for a couple of hours now. Let's get the latest information from him. Jeff. Hey, good morning, guys. We saw lightning all over this part of town, really throughout the entire morning, hundreds of lightning strikes. It seems like one of those lightning strikes may have hit this house. You see it right there. You can see the damage that that eventually caused. The homeowner said that between 530, 515 around that time that he had already been up for an hour because so much lightning was going on around this area. And then he felt uh, what appeared to be a lightning strike hit his house. He said he felt it and he went up into his attic to kind of look around and see if he could see anything. And at that point, he could not.
come back downstairs, and then apparently his doorbell started ringing just nonstop, and he knew there was nobody at the door. He went and checked that, so at that point he thought, you know, maybe there's something wrong with the electrical system of the house, went back up into the attic, and that is when he saw smoke, and then called the fire department. The homeowner was able to get himself, his wife, and the two dogs in the home outside of the house. They are okay. By the time the fire department got here, uh, there's heavy smoke in the attic. Two firefighters went in, or the fire department went into the uh, attic of this house, and initially they thought that they could uh, fight the fire from inside the home and maybe spare the home, but after about 15, 20 minutes or so, they realized it, was, it wasn't going to happen, so they got out of the attic, got out of the entire house, in fact, and went defensive, which basically meant they were fighting this fire from the outside. Uh, and as you can see, the result of, of that effort, this house uh, destroyed by the flames. The roof has collapsed uh, throughout the entire structure. We can actually see through the second floor window and see uh, the sky out the other side. So obviously this is a complete loss uh, for this homeowner. But the good news out here is that the homeowner, his wife, and the two dogs that were in the home, they are going to be okay. Uh, we. They're kind of kept down from us from where we are right now. We haven't been able to speak with them directly, but firefighters tell us that this was a very intense fire. And firefighters also tell us that, you know, they really weren't surprised that they were going to see uh, a house fire pop up tonight uh, in early in the morning because of so many lightning strikes that were out here. I think at one point Alita said that there were 250, 300 lightning strikes, probably way many more than that now. We saw them throughout the area as we were driving around. Of course, this is the result of one of those strikes. The fire is still under investigation, but it is believed that lightning was the cause. Reporting live, Jeff Ealing, 13. I would news. Jeff, thank you. And ABC 13 reporter Pooja Lodia is in the Montrose area this morning. She tweeted out that the rain and flooding had been happening right there in her area. Showed us a little bit of the video she had from the car this morning. Yeah, we'll update you with some live coverage in just a couple of minutes now. But as we leave our live coverage this morning, stay with ABC 13 and our news app for the latest on these storms as they continue to move through. This has been breaking news from ABC 13. For more information, head to ABC13.com or open our ABC 13 News app.